Ever feel like you're running from your own emotions? Or that relationships are just too much? If so, you're not alone. For many, the fear of commitment and feelings of anxiety come from one powerful root. We've never learned to truly contain and validate our feelings. Instead, we suppress, we overreact, or we simply disconnect. But it doesn't have to stay this way. Let's explore how to break free from old patterns and build healthier relationships with ourselves and others. For many avoidant individuals, the typical response to emotions is either to suppress them or to overreact when the pressure becomes too much. Imagine a child who's sad or angry and hears things like, it's nothing, or be strong, grow up. Maybe even, don't be such a crybaby. Messages like these may seem harmless, but they teach children that their feelings don't really matter, or worse, that they're wrong for feeling anything at all. When this happens, children don't learn to trust their own feelings. Instead, they start to disconnect from their emotions, creating an inner void that suppresses most feelings, or alternatively, makes them feel easily overwhelmed. Without the tools to process feelings, you may become anxious, depressed, or feel guilty or uncomfortable when emotions like love or excitement arise in relationships. This can even make relationships feel scary or overwhelming, leading them to avoid commitment altogether. On the other hand, some children experience the opposite, overreaction. Imagine a child who cries and sees their parent immediately panic or even start crying too. Parents who overreact to their child's emotions might unintentionally signal that emotions are a huge deal, maybe even too much to handle. This response teaches the child that emotions are overwhelming for everyone, and they might start hiding their feelings to keep a sense of harmony. For the sake of their parents' well-being, they start suppressing their own. This model not only sacrifices the child's well-being, but can also teach them to overreact to their own emotions as adults making relationships feel intense and unmanageable. So, what's the healthy alternative? The answer is containing emotions. This doesn't mean repressing or denying them, but creating a safe space to hold and acknowledge feelings with calmness and love. When parents can honor a child's emotions, anger, sadness, excitement, love, it teaches them that their feelings are valid and okay. This skill is the foundation of self-regulation later in life. When feelings are validated in this way, children develop confidence, resilience, and the ability to handle challenges in relationships without feeling overwhelmed. They understand that difficult emotions aren't the end of the world, but are just part of the experience, and they trust themselves to navigate them. So, how do you start containing your emotions today? Here are a few steps to build this skill for yourself. Notice the inner voice. Begin by listening to the voice in your head that says, oh, it's nothing, or don't be silly, just ignore it. Notice too if you tend to freak out or get anxious when certain feelings arise. Observe how you react to others' emotions as well. Do you feel the urge to dismiss, advise, or get panicky? Acknowledge and validate. Recognize that this inner voice has been trying to protect you from difficult emotions, a coping mechanism learned from childhood. This awareness is the first step in shifting your response. Tune into the emotion. Take a moment to feel the emotion fully. How does that sadness or anger feel in your body? Sit with it without repressing or overreacting. Allow yourself to feel it fully, knowing that it's valid and okay to feel this way. Ask yourself if there's any outer change in you, or if simply validating and accepting the feeling is enough. As you practice containing 
and validating your emotions, you'll naturally strengthen the relationship with yourself, building self-confidence, equanimity, and self-love. And with a healthier self-relationship, your relationships with others become more fulfilling and grounded in mutual respect and understanding. So, how do you handle strong emotions now? How do you plan to approach them moving forward? Let me know in the comments. And remember, if you want to learn more about building fulfilling relationships, don't forget to subscribe and visit transmuteyourself.com for more insights and resources.